What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. So hey guys, I know I've been absent a little bit. Got a lot of things going on. Uh, really preparing here for the, the busy holiday season for October, November, and December. Some of our uh, busier months. Now I gotta tell you guys that saltyscales.com, if you ever wanna know how to support us purchasing our gear, it's one of the primary ways that I feed my family, help uh, pay my employees, and, and ultimately am able to put out good content. But I wanted to start off on the good word. In these crazy times that we live in, guys, I thought this was interesting. Just flipping through Matthew uh, today, and I found this. Now, I can relate to this, and I think all of us can in some way or another. And I think it's a very important message for the, the crazy times that we're currently enduring. And we are going through some interesting and crazy times. Wouldn't you agree? So this says, love for enemies. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are you not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Guys, all I can say is I struggle with this myself, and sometimes we just got to let things go, guys. We got to we gotta forgive, and, and there's so much hate and, and things going on with Black Lives Matter and the, the riots and the... the um, politics that are going on you, you open up facebook and the first thing you're, you're greeted with is just turmoil so guys just open up the book let's jump in i'm going to do a q a today and this is some questions that a lot of people have asked over the years and i'm going to try to answer them to the best of my ability chris will actually be the one asking the questions so i hope you guys enjoy this it's a little different we're out here fishing i cannot buy a bite it got a super high tide the dock is almost underwater we have a, a crazy barometer overcast like all the conditions are perfect shrimp are perfect and i can't buy a bite so we're gonna do a q a let's go so i got a popping cork on a couple foot of 25 pound leader and a two out hook also throwing some live shrimp hooking them all various different ways if i've showed you how to rig a shrimp before but if you're not familiar with that i'll link it right up there you can take a look at that but I'm not getting a bite. Tide just transitioned to go out, so we're trying to see if maybe we can get something to start actually biting. So let's get this thing started. Chris is gonna ask the very first question off the list. What do we got, Christopher? All right, guys, so this is a series of questions here that have been asked throughout the years. I also threw a little twist on some of them, so Josh has briefly heard them, but I promise you he has had no time to prepare. All right, so number one, Josh, why fishing? Why do you enjoy fishing and what, what got you into it? Fishing is my release, guys. I started fishing when I was a child with my grandfather, bluegill fishing bridges. And they're some of my most fondest memories. I really believe that um, just pretty much being introduced to the outdoors at a young age is really what instilled a lot of my passion for life and my desire to want to help teach people, show people, and just be completely um, surrounded by the things that I love, which is the outdoors and fishing. <clears throat> all right, all right, good start. Second question, where's Baby Huey? And if you don't know who Baby Huey is, guys, it was uh, Josh's uh, flats boat. Baby Huey was sold, guys. Um, I did sell her, now what, three months ago? So if you guys aren't familiar, Baby Huey was a flat skills, did a lot of videos on her, good little boat. Uh, I was going to upgrade, but I was also in the process of buying a house. If you guys aren't familiar, my brother-in-law brother got in a real bad car accident, had a real bad brain injury, put a lot of things on hold. Um, but I sold the boat because I did plan to upgrade, but I put everything on hold as of right now due to some things that we got going on in the family. A lot of memories on Baby Huey. If you haven't checked out those videos, guys, go check them out. Favorite fish to catch? One of my favorite fish, well, inshore is redfish. I think they're a bulldog fish. I love the way 
that I could target them with both live bait or artificial. They'll hit a fly. And ultimately, guys, they're just a gorgeous fish. Really, really love and respect the redfish. Favorite fish to eat? Favorite fish to eat is probably going to be uh, mahi mahi. I love black and mahi, man. You put that on on a, a nice toasted bun. Now I'm getting hungry. But the black and mahi is not only beautiful, but delicious. All right, guys. So this one threw Josh for a twist. Whenever I asked him uh, briefly earlier, I don't think he's even prepared a question. Something you will always remember out on the water, like a, a fond memory that you have something that you never want to forget. Favorite memories go back to both my girls, my first time taking my girls fishing, and also my very first times fishing with my grandfather. Those are gonna be the ones that hold dear to my heart and that I'll never ever forget. All right, here's another one going off that same question, something you would like to forget, some sort of experience you had on the water that you could uh, live without remembering. My very worst experience came when I was only 15 years old, guys, and I remember it. It literally happened on this flat right here within just a few hundred yards of where I stand. Um, me and my cousin were on my uncle's boat, and we were riding the bow of the boat, and literally on the bow of the boat, and I always did it, guys. Very irresponsible, but I was a teenager. I didn't know no better, and my uncle allowed for it to happen. Um, but it was lower tide and we hit the bottom and we both, me and my cousin, was flung into the water. Well, when I came up, I didn't see my cousin. And then when I did finally spot him, he was face down in the water. Well, when I finally got to swim over to him and he came, I got to pull him up. There was blood just spewing out his neck. The prop had ran over him and hit him in his face multiple times, cut his, his juggler here and it took everything we had to save his life. Luckily he did, uh, he was saved by the grace of God, but I never prayed so hard in my life. And I believe God was there that day. The doctor accredited me for saving his life. And I told him it had nothing to do with me. That was God and all God. And I prayed so hard that day. But that was an experience that I wish. And the thing is, uh, even the fishing was bad that day. Um, so all together, that whole day was just a nightmare. I wish I could forget that day or wish it, I could reverse that day. All right, all right, next question. Does fishing for a living make you hate it? I don't know that if you truly have a passion for fishing that it can make you hate it, but I have seen and witnessed that if you fish for a living or you completely take something that you truly love and, and turn it into just a monetary experience, you can lose your passion for it. So I don't know that you would necessarily hate it, but I know charter captains that are full-time guides and they're out in the water 250 days or 280 days out of the year and they don't fish. They only do charters and they only do it for the money. So you can lose your passion for it if you abuse it for the wrong reasons. And that's one of the reasons as a charter captain myself or a licensed captain, I don't guide full-time but I do do the, the apparel, I do do the, a little bit of chartering, and then of course the video. And so it's all things that allow me to enjoy the sport. All right, here's an easy one for you, nice and simple. Your favorite Salty Scale shirt. Favorite Salty Scale shirt is gonna be between my Gen 3 hoodie. I love the new, the new hoodie with the fisherman's pocket. And then the brand new Snook shirt. I don't have it on today, but I love the Florida flag on there. It's got the ventilated sides, a perfect blend of spandex and polyester. Very, very comfortable and protects you on the water. Next question pertains to Old Town. A lot of you guys didn't know, Josh owned an Old Town kayak before he even started working for him. So what drew you to Old Town? Yeah, a lot of people don't know that I was using an Old Town eight, nine years before Old Town ever sent me a kayak. So I'm very loyal to the brands that I use and I usually only use the ones that I know are great uh, or offer some type of uh, value for the cost. But I had an Old Town Predator paddle kayak for many, many years, loved it. But let me tell you, after I got the, the um, or I, did I say pedal? I mean paddle kayak, but I've now been exposed to pedal and then the autopilot and i'm completely tainted i don't know that i could ever have a paddle kayak now but true 
value for the money. Very comfortable, very stable, gonna last you forever if you take care of it. That autopilot spoils you guys, I'm telling you right now. Next question, bucket list fish you have not caught. There's quite a few of those and you've probably seen a little bit of that on my bucket list series, which if you haven't, I'll link up in the playlist right here, the bucket list series, which is really cool. A Mako shark, the fastest fish in the ocean, can swim up to speeds of 66 miles per hour. They jump, they taste great. They, they're just a ferocious predator, apex predator. I would love to catch a Mako shark. They're like a unicorn of the sea. They what? are the unicorn of the sea, a fast unicorn. All right, here's, here's a fun one, guys. A lot of you, I, I'm interested to know this one. Dream boat. Dream boat, I'd probably go uh, if it's going to be an offshore boat, it's going to be like a 30-foot uh, contender with like quad 300 yamis or 400 yamis, something like that. Probably about a half a million dollar boat. <laughs> That's on the cheaper end, guys. Um, favorite spinning reel currently? My new favorite spinning reel. It used to be the Shimano Strat. But... Right now, I have to give it to the Daiwa Certate. It's an expensive reel, guys, but you've heard me uh, speak about it a few times. It's like a fine watch, and mechanically, it is truly smooth and beautiful. I mean, I really, really fancy the Daiwa Certate current. How much does it cost? I think it's like a $500 reel, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's not cheap by any means, but if you fish like I do, and you really appreciate the uh, just the build and the construction and quality of, of such a fine reel, then I don't think you'll have a problem spending the money. Hey, put it on your Christmas list, guys. Tell the wife. Favorite bait caster. Favorite bait caster? All time or currently. I mean, the Shimano Corrado or Right now, that 13 TX, one of the smoothest bait casters I've ever used. You guys always ask me about it. It's the teal reel. It's about a $400 reel, but man, that reel has been very good to me. Super, super smooth and mechanically sound. I do think they could uh, reduce the price a little bit. I think it's a little on the expensive side, but two great reels. I know you guys probably can agree that the Corrado is definitely agrees uh, or definitely deserves to be on that list. All right, so I guess we're going to end with a, a very simple one. This is a, this is a funny one, guys. I'm setting the scene here. You're on the water for 8 to 10 hours throughout the day. Kayak, boat, doesn't matter. It's nice and hot out. What's your go-to snack and drink? Go-to snack and drink? I like to keep it simple. I have a hard time drinking and eating when I'm on the water, and I get dehydrated, heart rate gets super high, and that's just because I'm so focused on fishing. Chris can even tell you I have problems even recording sometimes because I just want to catch fish. But when I do eat, if I had like anything that I wanted and I could take a moment to relax and eat, just a simple Cuban and a, a red Powerade, that's all. I'm a simple kind of guy, man. Not catching any fish. I am not catching any fish. I can't buy a bite, guys. I'm going to try to catch a fish on camera for you. I'm going to put my best effort in. If you like this video though, make sure you give a thumbs up and subscribe. And stay tuned here. I'm gonna get this fish. I am determined to catch a fish. I don't even care if it's a catfish at this point. I've been fishing for like an hour and a half and not got one single bite. Only use three shrimp. Maybe I just got the bad juju. I ain't been fishing. So they're like, you know what? You don't deserve to catch me. Maybe if Chris maybe Chris could catch one. Then he could just hand me the rod. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? So we are about to get stormed out. I have not got the first bite, and I've been fishing for like two hours. Maybe I truly am rested. But I think we're going to have to call it quits. Make sure you give a thumbs up, even though we didn't catch fish. If you have a question that you want answered, comment down below. Maybe I'll do another Q&A. It's been a good while since I've done such a, uh, a video. If I've ever done one, I'm not sure. I'd have to look back at the 500 videos. But hey guys, give a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Till next time, I'll see you on the water.